Maz, your thoughts on Jacoby Brissett and where the Patriots are at this moment. Well, as you say, Jacoby Brissett is the bridge quarterback. I am now ready to jump off it, is what I would like to say. And in fact, as a, I, I would go so far as to tell you that I am underwhelmed, but that would suggest that I am whelmed at all. And I am, <laughs> can I say I'm unwhelmed? I'm not whelmed? I'm negative whelmed? I'm zero whelmed? Like you tell me what it is. I joked about some of this on Twitter last night, but I say it with all seriousness. Is it possible for a team to be worse after signing a bunch of free agents? Yes. Because I don't. I don't. <laughs> they just spent $72 million and they suck worse than they did. They might not win two games this year. They barely won two last year. I'll stop now. I'm sorry. My name isn't on the marquee. <laughs> so I, but I say this in all seriousness. Are they better? Are they any better than they were? Because I don't really think they are. The the only thing I could tell you is that Antonio, is that his name, Antonio Gibson? Antonio Gibson. Sounds right. Gives them a, uh, I think, a pass catching back that they did not have. So that feels like a little bit of an upgrade. But other than that, I, I don't feel like there's really any improvement whatsoever. None. Now, the one thing, clearly they have made some sort of emphasis or put some sort of emphasis on culture. So do I think this is going to be a quote-unquote more likable team or a more hard-playing team? Probably, but I still don't know how that translates if they just lose. And I don't think that they, they have built anything here that has any capability of winning. That's the part that alarms me. I don't see any any talent. A couple of guys I'm glad they kept. Don't get me wrong. I like Bourne, but Bourne is a two-and-a-half receiver. I'm not quite sure he's good enough to be a two. He's probably a little bit better than a three. Hunter Henry, I always thought was a little overrated, but he's an NFL tight end. I don't see any premium talent. I don't see any marquee guys, and it feels like they've spent a good uh, spent a good chunk of money to stay in the same spot. Murray? I got no problem with it. I, I really because I don't want this team to go out and try to buy their way into middling contention and a playoff spot like they did in 2021. How'd that work out for them? It didn't. You know, oh yay! Well, we made the playoffs. How'd that playoff game work out for you? And then they got in trouble because they overspent on players that mostly sucked. So one, uh, I'm into it, and two, I'm into the Brissett signing simply for spite because you two ghouls hate it so much. <laughs> Can uh, <clears throat> I stop? So I appreciate the spite, Murray. Did the free agency get him in trouble? Uh, yeah, it did in in part. In 21, it did. Been How? With, spending on guys like Nelson Aguilar, uh, the stiff up front on the defensive line, whose name I was it, uh, that they ended up giving it a, another extension to. They spent on wrong players. They they spent too much money that year. And John U. Smith. John U. Smith, another one. Thank you. Uh, the guy from Miami, I can't remember. Either way. No, no. Well, look, they were bad signings. Gotcha. Uh, Thanks. That's what it was. They were bad signings. But is that how they got in trouble? How were they in trouble? They have a million. They got the most cap space in the league. They're, they it didn't put them in cap jail. They've had more money to spend than any team in the league for years and years and years and years. They just haven't spent it, which is a, a different story, Murray. But they they are not have not been in cap jail. No, so how do those? It's not so much about cap jail. It's just that they tried to do it in a different way. The other that other teams that again teams have looked at and said like that's stupid. Like the Jets have done before. You're going to try to buy your way back into contention, and I just don't think that that works with free agents. They're at rock bottom. You're going to have to build this through the draft. And I know this isn't sexy, but it seems to be at least they have a plan in place. Okay, it's a lot of good locker room types. That's what Brissett is going to be like. So it's going to make for a better culture for this rookie class, which is now going to certainly include a quarterback. And the defense is still going to keep them in games. They're going to be okay. I don't think they're going to be four wins bad like last year. I really Really don't. Oh, they're bad. Oh, they're bad top to bottom. The the whole thing is bad. The defense isn't bad. The the coach is underwhelming. The offensive scheme and offensive coach is bottom of the league. The quarterback, it's the worst starting quarterback in the league. I don't know. Minshew just went to the Raiders, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so it's the close. Raiders might be the it, close. Or do you want okay. Sam, Sam Darnold, who's going to be the bridge guy in Minnesota? They, I was just going to say team. Minnesota with Sam Darnold. And Sam Howell with the Commanders, who Brissett couldn't beat out. So, I mean, I don't know. N- name a worst starting quarterback in the league. Oh, no, no, no. They're in the running. They're in the running for the for the bottom five. There's no question. Tennessee, Will Levis. Would you rather have Will Levis or Jacoby Brissett? Levis. Me too. Okay. So, I mean, you're, you're talking just about the worst starting quarterback in the league. 
they're, they right now are going to be worse with really underwhelming coaching. An offensive coordinator no one else wanted. A first-time head coach who's a linebacker coach. Uh, they're worse. And free agency isn't what did them in. And they signed a bunch of bad guys. I'm not telling you that they signed the right guys. But they were never in cap trouble. Never. At any point in time. Whether you believe in the cap or not. Like, here we are a couple years later. And they the last two years, they've had more money to spend than any team in the league. They just haven't spent it. So, free, no. What did them in was the drafts. The drafts did them in. And what they did with Mac Jones did them in. The coaching. Uh, so, I don't know what my point is other than to say what they're doing now is so underwhelming. It's not even funny. It's just top to bottom underwhelming. And there is a middle path there to be more competitive in the short term and just draft better. Like I, I there, the two things are not mutually exclusive. Like what, why couldn't you have a better veteran quarterback to sit here and bridge the gap to the young kid. Why does it have to be the worst starting quarterback in the league? It doesn't. This is okay. my this is my issue too. I'm sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Go. No, finish. No, no. Th- this is my issue too. Is that the, this whole idea of you have to build through the draft and free agencies for the teams that want to, uh, you know, go and win a championship? You augment with free agency. I don't believe that. I mean, I think that's the ideal blueprint. Don't get me wrong, Murray. Like, if you can hit on all your draft picks. And now you can use free agency to augment. Great. That's ideal. That's perfect. But to do that, you've got to nail the draft. You've got to be like San Francisco. You've got to hit just about every pick, certainly the ones in the top rounds. Uh, you have to have a quarterback in place. Like, you know, there's a, there's a lot there. I, al- I also think if you're going to integrate young players, and I'm a big believer in this, is you have to have a culture – that forces them to grow the way you want them to grow. And that just doesn't mean having good guys around. It means having a winning culture to a competitive culture so that everybody understands what's at stake and what the expectations are. Like, to me, you can do both. I think the free agency a couple years ago worked. I've said that from day one. It worked. It got you into the playoffs that year. And there was enough left over from it that if you were just drafted right and done right by Mac Jones, and again, who's not good enough, but, you know, good enough to keep you competitive, and hadn't done that coaching thing between Judon and Bourne and Gotchow, he won one of the bad ones. I mean, I think he's overrated, but he won one of the bad ones. I mean, uh, and Hunter Henry, I mean, just those three or four guys, Hunter Henry, Kendrick Bourne, Matthew Judon, God shall. I don't know who else came over there, but like that's four pieces. If you had, you know, not drafted Cole Strange and Tyquan Thornton, you drafted a couple of guys that could play. If you didn't bury Mac Jones with that coaching, you're still a competitive team. You're not a championship team. I mean, I get that, but free agency isn't what did him in. Uh, so it's just a stopgap, though. You got to build it, this. Look, you crowed about the Packer way. That that's what Elliot Elliot Wolf said that they're going to do now. The Packer way, and this is clear that to me, this is what they're doing. No overpays for true free agents. They pay their own guys that are free agents and try to build through the draft. So this yeah, is what so, you, this is what you wanted. No, it's definitely not what I wanted. Uh, you know, I don't want a, a last place team year after year after year. That's not the Packer way. They're always in it. I'm like I'm not. I'm not. No. There, there's. There's. They could have done more. They absolutely can do more, and they're choosing not to do more. They can do more and not sacrifice the future. That's that. That's my point. You can sign Russell Wilson, and I, now maybe he doesn't want to come here. So like, I get that part, but you can sign Russell Wilson. You can sign Saquon Barkley. The running back money, like that's a two-year proposition at most anyway. They're, they're in on Calvin Ridley. I don't know if he's in on you. But if you came home or you could trade for Justin Fields, who's not even going to cost you that much. If your offseason was trading a fifth or sixth round pick for Justin Fields, signing Saquon Barkley, and signing Calvin Ridley, how does that hurt your future? What, what, what is And if J- Justin Fields is a one, at most, two-year proposition while the kid gets ready. And then you got someone fun in the backfield, and before you email me again, you Ass hats 
I know I'm anti-running back, but three weeks ago, I told you, you might as well go get a running back. So you know I said that three weeks ago. This year, this particular team, I said it was different. They could be in the running back market, and I wouldn't care. I'm just telling you, how would you feel if you're paying the highest ticket prices in the league, which you are? How would you feel if they came home with Justin Fields, Saquon Barkley, and Calvin Ridley? Well, none of which hurts you. None of which hurts you into the future. It's none of it. It's certainly more exciting, and I would prefer Fields than Jacoby. Do you Brissett. think you'd win more games? Um, maybe, yeah, maybe one or two. Sure. Okay. And in the meantime, you've not given up any draft pick that matters. I'm not yelling at you, Murray. I'm just yelling. I'm yelling at them. The the only draft pick you're giving up is what it would cost for Fields, which is a fifth or a sixth round pick. No, none of your other picks are impacted. You're after Calvin Ridley anyway. Saquon Barkley would be a year or two. That's what running backs are. That's what his money was. In the meantime, you'll have a more entertaining product, something worth investing in. You'll probably win some more games, and it doesn't do anything to hurt your future. But they're not they are not doing that because that costs money or that, that was just something. I don't know. It's uncomfortable. Oh, would Justin Fields work here? Would he uh, would he mentor the young kid? Would he want would he have delusions or grand? All the wrong reasons, as far as I'm concerned. It's just like they're accepting sucking Maz. Like Maz, why are they even on Calvin Ridley? I mean, they're not going to be any good. So why, you know, why upset the apple cart? So because so, no, they're going to draft a quarterback and they want to have a weapon for him. Well, right. Yeah, so, but the quarterback's not playing. But 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 the point is, you want a piece in place for a couple of years down the road when. You are ready to compete. Why do you have to sit a couple of a couple of years? No, I'm just saying a couple of years, meaning the receiver. He yeah. does, maybe you won't have the quarterback in year one, but you'll have him in year two, right? In other words, if you sit him for the first year, Jaden Daniels, he'll. Be, and the other thing is, he can practice with the guy. You build a rapport. <laughs> like there is some sort of dynamic in place that for when you're ready to take off, there you go. The pieces are in place. Like I, I just don't like the mentality, Murray of. Let's wait until we have all the building blocks. Then we'll go to free agency. Why can't you put a couple of the free agent pieces in place and then add the draft picks, be a little bit better out of the gate, and also make the transition a little smoother? Like, And, and you know what the real reason is? Ownership doesn't want to spend money on any team in any sport until they have to, which I hate. Like it's, well, you know, again, back to suck for less. Let's suck for less. The, the goal is, if we're going to suck, we're going to suck for less. When no, did we say that, that? What is that from? Man, I said it yesterday. I said it yesterday. I thought we, but there was a previous team, a previous year that I thought that that was a slogan that we kind of had. We may have. I don't know. It doesn't feel that creative, frankly. It rings a bell. No, it's deja vu. Like, I, you know, yes, a lot of our stuff less. is on repeat. I'm pretty sure that's a repeat from something we did years ago. Yep. Let's suck for less. That's the goal. Let's make the bumper stickers and the t-shirts. In fact, I may wear one tomorrow. Suck <laughs> for less. That's the goal. Let's all suck for less. I, I, I can't believe how bad this rebuild is. I mean, really. I, I You can't. You could not have picked a more uninspiring offensive coordinator and scheme than Alex Van Pelt and what they were running with the Browns. And you cannot pick, other than Joe Flacco, you could hardly pick a more uninspired bridge quarterback that just basically screams, we don't care about winning games, than Jacoby Brissett. It get, there is no guy that screams, we don't really care about winning games more than Jacoby Brissett. No one. No one you can give me. Russell Wilson's going to try and win games, and Jacoby, and, uh, excuse me, Russell Wilson's going to try and win games, and Justin Fields is going to try and win games. Jacoby Brissett is here, apparently, because he can hold the rookie's hand, and when it's time for the rookie to play, he'll sit down and not open his mouth. Would you have felt that that way about Ryan? That's why he's here. Would he's you, not here to win games. Everyone else, Minshew's going to try and win games. Would you feel that I'm way I'm sorry, Murray. about Ryan Fitzpatrick, say, four years ago? Would I feel that way about Ryan Fitzpatrick four games ago? I mean, a four gamer. Year, four years ago. I'm sorry, right, so in, I, in 2020, the Dolphins drafted two a fifth overall. They start Ryan Fitzpatrick for the first six games. They go three and three. In week seven, they end up starting the rookie. They go 10 and six with a defensive minded coach from the Belichick system. Like, this is the thing. Like, as long as they can kind of tread water for a little while and the kid shows off, 
in practice, like, it's okay. This has happened before. You can have a bridgy suck guy that can keep you above water for a little while, and then the rookie I'd can so come much in. Rather, I'd so much rather have Fitzpatrick than Brissett. It's not even funny. But it's a good locker room guy that can hold the quarterback's hand. You like, it's a veteran guy. That. That's what Brissett is. That is. What, is that what Fitzpatrick is? I don't know. Fitzpatrick goes out there and tries to win. I, I think Jacoby's just here. He's just here to lay down when we're sick of looking at him and not raise a stink. That's what everyone we've asked from Gasper to all the media guys I'm talking about. So Gasper or uh, Breer, like the, the first the first thing they say is that he fits off the field in terms of your rookie quarterback. That's it. So he'll hold the kid's hand. And when it's time for him to sit down because we're just so sick of looking at him, he's going to sit down and not say anything. That's why he's here. Meanwhile, you're asking your fans to pay the highest ticket prices in the league. It's just, we usually don't look at ticket prices in football, but I don't know how you, it's like, I, it's so underwhelming. I, I, I don't know where to begin.